got Strauss, Mahler, Ravel, and Debussy. I mean, Debussy, one of the great, great composers of the 20th century, his songs are simply wonderful. And he's very literary, all the Verlaine settings, for example, in Baudelaire. Um, and to compare him, I mean, you, you then, the other Frenchman is Ravel, again, similarly involved with, with text. Um, and then you've got Strauss, who's very different. Strauss tended to set less literary texts. And Mahler. I mean, Mahler, as you know, he set a lot of Knaben Wunderhorn. These are folk poetry. And the only poet of any merit, sorry, of any pedigree that he set was um, Friedrich Rückert. Um, so it's interesting. You, you've got the four composers, and they're very different. I think they're very well chosen. Programming is really important because um, you need to choose songs that you sing best in a way. I mean, don't necessarily choose the songs that you like best. If you can't do that, there's no point, for example, in choosing Schubert's Dem Unendlichen or um, Mahler's Um Mitternacht if you haven't got the vocal equipment to sing these rather loud songs. And I would also advise students not to sing long songs that last five minutes or six minutes. Five minutes is a long time to hold the attention of a jury or an audience. And if you can't do it, I think it's better not to. And then don't automatically um, choose the popular songs. I mean, we hear so many Alle Seelen and Zu Eignung of Strauss, they're good songs, but there are, there are actually better songs. So live the poem. You have to live this text. Um, and, and, and only then, I suggest, can you really t take risks, you know, with phrasing and so on. And don't, don't sing beautifully all the time. Too many singers sing too beautifully. The texts sometimes need you to sing anything but beautifully. Um, I mean, Dichterliebe, for example, is so full of hate and self-mockery. It's also full of love. But, you know, things like in Im Rhein, Im Heiligen Ströme, um, in the last stanza, Es schweben Blumen und Englein um unsere liebe Frau. And then the line, Die Augen, die Lippen, die Lippen, die Wenglein, die gleichen der Liebsten genau. This is comparing the lover to the Virgin Mary. She's pure, she's virginal, and that's the problem. He wants her. And so you shouldn't sing this lovingly, you should spit it out. But it is acting, which is why when you have a program in a Liederabend and the, the, all the audience have their head buried into the program to look at the words, they're missing out on magic on the stage. And um, with some of these singers today and yesterday, there has been magic, what they do with their eyes or their body or their hands. Uh, actually, body language on stage, people don't attend to this. Even when you walk on stage, you can tell something. I was actually sitting in the Wigmore Hall competition next to one of the jurors, a very famous singer, and he turned to me and said, even before the girl had started singing, this is not going to be very good. So I said, well, how do you know this? because look how she's standing, look how she came in. Now, this doesn't necessarily apply, but, but it is important how you stand in the well of the piano and how you walk on stage if you look confident. And your face must mirror what your, um, your voice is saying. And sometimes they don't quite add up. You know, your, your, your singing is saying one thing, but your face has a different expression on it. So I think that's not good. So I think people have to think really carefully about, about these things. If you're going to move people, 